I like to think of myself as a hip person. I like to think of myself as somebody who has the finger on the pulse, even though I could be a little lame in the dark sometimes. But Marvelous and Paul Shivari and Devin Tingle and all our amazing listeners here on WCPT 820 AM give me a hard time because I am very progressive when it comes to world changes and the way sports are evolving and adapting into the modern age to bring in the youths to join us in our cult of sports fandom. But Marvelous, I found myself on another end of this conversation when just a few days ago, the Chicago Bears and about a dozen other teams unveiled their new alternate jerseys for this coming season. Two games for the Chicago Bears. They will be wearing these new all orange jerseys. That's right. The navy and orange helmet that you've grown to love all these years, whether it's the white sea or the orange sea, is now going to be a very, very bright orange and a dark navy blue or black, depending on the look of it, of that sea with orange jerseys that we've seen, the pumpkin jerseys that we've seen on white pants. I think they haven't gone full crazy and gone full Illini, but Marvelous, you know me, I'm somebody like, yeah, put up, put a runner on second after 13 innings. Bring the DH to the American League. You know what? Put a four points line in the NBA, whatever the case may be. But I have to admit, tradition might have out, outdone it this time. And I am not in love with these jerseys. So Marvelous, you saw some of the cool ones. The Arizona Cardinals black helmets with the red Cardinal. Even the Bengals going with the white stripes. Dallas Cowboys going with some old school looks. A lot of cool looking ones. Carolina, the Saints, but our local Chicago Bears. What did you think when you saw the orange crush come out into our world? I thought it would be a good look for Halloween. <laughs> but uh, maybe maybe it has to do with the, one of the games will be streaming on Amazon Prime. Oh, so uh, you know maybe that's it. They want it. Maybe this is the dictated by Amazon Prime for the Washington game. But uh, I mean, I don't care how what they what they dress like as long as uh, they they perform on the field. If the orange makes them play better, great. But <laughs> and, you know it doesn't bother me. They could you know dress any way they like and uh, I guess orange is one of the basic colors so uh you know it kind of makes sense but uh you know it uh, it's it just a little you. something yeah it for conversation you. yeah no, so this, this is something for conversation like, okay that's interesting so this is not one of those weird traditional things that really gets you going or really like leans one way or the other like is that something that you're only doing here in the pros, like if Michigan or Notre Dame or some of the, do you, are you somebody who is a traditionalist when it comes to the, the clothing, the article of clothing they're wearing, or are you more <laughs> traditionalist when it comes to the sport itself, the game itself? Yeah. Well, when you talk about the four point line, I mean, it was, it was heresy with the three point line. I actually, when I, I saw the American basketball association uh, with the three point line and I, and I thought, wow, I mean, if somebody's done by 17 points, in the you know it's with uh, ten minutes left, the game's over. With the three point line, it's not over. So I thought that was kind of cool. And the uh, and the DH, I, I, I've gotten used to it in the National League, but I, I wasn't a big fan of it. And I guess it is kind of nice not to see the pitcher go up there and attempt to, to bat, particularly in the uh, situation where uh, where they have the interleague games where the American League batter was the pitcher was batting for like the first time in his career, maybe, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> some of that was goofy, but uh, so I think that that makes sense that it's uniform, but in terms of uniforms, uh, uh, you yeah, know, I, I think that it's good to wear the traditional uniforms, but a, a weird looking uniform. I mean, it's, it's good for conversation and uh, it's good for the, 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 the optics on TV. So it's a conversation piece is all it is. And if it improves their performance, I'm for it. If it's a, if it's a neutral for performance, uh, it doesn't. It, I don't. You know, that doesn't uh, uh, sit sit well with me either. But if somehow this this generates some wins, if they would beat Dallas and Washington, then they should continue wearing it more often. You know, that like some nobody will step on the on the chalk going back and forth in the dugout. Maybe will like be something that will generate. Uh, a tradition that you know that they won't that they'll wear orange and they'll win a bunch of games. So if that if that's what happens, that's great. I, I'm glad you brought up the winning. I, I mean, all of this is in tongue in cheek, right? It really doesn't yeah. matter if they're only going to win six games, if they only win two games, if they find a way win the division, if they're the number one pick in the draft. Doesn't really mean anything. We know that this is a logistical thing. It's to sell jerseys. It's for marketing. And you know what? This is why I brought it up though. When you were bringing up the winning, 
you never know with things like this, when new traditions are being built, what new cool things for the next generation of fan is. And if for some reason, let's say the Bears don't win a lot of games this year, which they're probably not going to. But if there's Bears fans out there right now, that this is their first real time being in love with the team, being heartbroken by a team, by following a team. And this jersey becomes part of a staple of it. And Justin Fields over the next decade is known for wearing this jersey. There are really cool optics from it. Now, the Bears are a, a an exception to this rule because they have a really cool look. The Steelers have a really cool look. The Packers have a really cool look. Look, I mean, I know that's uh, blasphemy, but there's a classical look. The 49ers look good. So I think the Bears are in a very unique position where they don't need to go crazy. Even with the Nike influence, they don't need to become the Oregon Ducks. But every once in a while, it's cool to spice things up and to not be the same old boring bears. I don't have to love it. I can have my own little fanboy images in my brain of what I would like the alternate jerseys to look. But at the end of the day, it's a product. It's a TV product. And if it looks good on people's 80-inch TVs on 4K, then who cares? The product is good. Now, the only time I'm a traditionalist, right? Let's say it's the NFC Championship game and it's the Bears versus the Packers. I want to look back on NFL films and NFL network and all these, and I want it to look like bears versus Packers, but for a week seven game on Amazon or whatever the case may be, have at it boys. Yeah. Well, it won't look like bears versus Packers. If they're playing in Chicago uh, at the end of December in Arlington Heights. (laughs) Oh, my friend. Right. They they won't look a lot different. Even if they're running out there naked, it's, you know, (laughs) What are we going to do, Marvelous, with yeah. the, without the excuse of no Bears weather? What are we yeah. going to do 10 years from now? Exactly. That's, well, that's before, the point. Before we move on from it, I mean, this was a fun conversation. We want to know your thoughts, obviously, on Twitter at Sports Keep it Go TV. Yay or nay on the Bears' new jersey. But before we put a rest to uh, Bears talk for this week, you know, they, they brought in some offensive linemen. They're, they're solidifying themselves. They're looking a little bit better. They're still a bad team, but they're looking a little bit more professional as we get closer with the camp already in, in progress and listening to Justin Fields. And I guess where, where I'm at right now is with the Chicago Bears and, and the moves that they've made and kind of this talk that we've seen from Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles recently is where were you at when it comes to your excitement? Again, it's only a few days opening in training camp but this this bears team like do you find yourself being a little bit more optimistic pessimistic as we get closer to the 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 preseason as camp is going in full swing where are you right now with the chicago bears i like the fact that they're signing a a riley reef you know somebody that's that's you know gonna get 12.5 million so he hopefully he's pretty good for that money for alignment and you know so uh you know he's a for, that's what they really need. I mean, they say Michael's Schofield on Monday, so mm-hmm. they're they're make, moving in the right direction. They're attempting to pr- protect their their young prize quarterback, and that's a key to their whole to the whole to their whole offensive scheme. I don't know what their scheme is going to be exactly, but uh, if if they can provide protection so he can you know escape and not uh, have to uh, take it, he was they were like one of the leaders in sacks last year, if not the leader. If you look at the stats, so that's got to be corrected. And uh, this is one way that they move in that direction. They have enough skill players, and their defense is solid. Uh, you know, as long as Roquan gets signed, it's gonna so, be interesting. What do you think about yeah. that? I mean, so this yeah. Roquan thing, they did move him to the will, so we know that he's probably going to be making even more money. I've always been under the exception: five years, ninety million, a hundred million is where he's at. It's where we've seen Leonard at, where we've seen a lot of the guys that play his position. He's a special player. He doesn't help Justin Fields right now. He doesn't help your team win right now. But mm-hmm. it's good optics, and it's affordable. This Bears team is going to have a lot of salary cap next season. I mean, what are your thoughts about the team going into when it comes to Roquan and Robert Quinn with the futures just up in the air? I mean, they, they've got a so – their defense is solid, and I think they should make sure that they that those pieces are, are kept in place. It, it's critical that, that the defense stays strong. It's always been the way the Bears win anyway throughout history, <laughs> the defense seemed to be the, the driver for their, you know, success. So um, if they if they can keep all those pieces in place and, and have enough offense, you know, they can win a few uh, 14 to 10 games. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that hit a little too close to home, Marvelous. Yeah. Before I let you go from this Bears conversation, so we've talked about 
moves they made on the field. We're talking about progression. We're talking about these new jerseys that are going to be on our television while they're playing at Soldier Field. But speaking of Soldier Field, $2 billion and a new dome. We saw the really nice, granted, really nice renderings. We've seen some architects who have kind of changed their tune and talked about maybe it is possible. But again, the renders show an open air stadium still. And it, it just looks like a little, it just it's a little too late, you know? And, and I thought it was kind of cool. God bless the city and, and, mm-hmm. and the mayor for throwing that Hail Mary. But really fast, your thoughts on the render of Soldier Field yeah. with a, a, a retractable or a dome over there in the lakefront. The, the Bears are pretty clear. They have no plans mm-hmm. other than Arlington Heights, but that will be a good look for the Chicago Jaguars. <laughs> Don't oh. say that. It's true. You know what? You, you're you kidding, but that might be a thing. Yeah, could happen. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of any other teams that might move. That was one that came to mind. So the traditional ones aren't going to move. It would have to be somebody like them mm-hmm. or somebody that has a stadium issue. So, uh, you know, that, that could happen. I mean, New York has two teams. L.A. has two. So, I mean, why not? It's funny you say that, Marvelous One. Jim Irsay was on a local station here. I believe it was uh, ESPN WMVP 1000. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He was on WSCR The Score on the Parkins and Spiegel show. And he mentioned that the reason why, you know, he's a local guy, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts. The reason why he didn't want to bring a team here is because he loves George Hallis. George Hallis was actually at his wedding. But he mentioned that this is a city that can have, can have a second football team. And if there's going to be eventually 40 NFL teams, including teams in Europe, Chicago will eventually get a second team. I'm under the belief that it will be at Soldier Field 2, 3, whatever you want to call it in Arlington Heights. It will be at Bear Stadium, like we're seeing with the Rams and the Chargers, because the McCaskies need to make as much money as they can. But don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that if there's a bad enough city that isn't supporting its team, that they won't go to Soldier Field. That the NFL won't do what it has to to renovate or build another new stadium or to try to convince the ownership. Over on there in the next 15 years, 30% Chicago has a second NFL team. Yeah, but, but you're right about that. I mean, even the problem is the small capacity mm-hmm. uh, of Soldier Field. And, and uh, you know, that maybe they'll do naming rights and mm-hmm. have, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that might help. But uh, there's just just too many things about the modern NFL that wouldn't appeal. And, and uh, I don't see that happening. I, I see, you know, possibly two teams in Arlington Heights would be before I'd see one a, one team in Arlington Heights and one in Soldier Field, honestly. I, I, I mean, how does the financing get done uh, for Soldier Field? I mean, it's, I have no idea, billions, right? To, Two billion pay. dollars. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's not, the taxpayers aren't going to do it. And it's, as long as that's owned by the park district, there's no way that, that that's ever going to happen, in my view. Smart thing to do, just make it yeah. a soccer stadium and make sure you, you show out for the Red Stars, the Chicago Fire, and you put yourself in a position to be like Nashville, Seattle, and Columbus, and you become an mm-hmm. epicenter for MLS and international mm-hmm. soccer. You want to mm-hmm. sell out Soldier Field? You can when Mexico versus USA is here, when Liverpool is playing Chelsea, when mm-hmm. you have Real Madrid versus Barcelona. You want to do this? You want to do this right, Chicago? Let the Bears do what they're going to do. Let them build their metropolis, make Soldier Field a soccer stadium, right. and blow it out. And we didn't even get a World Cup. For that next uh, round, that, that's a, that was also surprising. Mm-hmm. So, a lot so. of interesting things, marvelous one. But I'm glad we got <laughs> to do anything from fashion runway all the way <laughs> to on the field. But we want to know your thoughts. What did you think about the Bears' new orange crush jerseys? Your <laughs> thoughts on the city putting out a proposal of putting an actual roof on Soldier Field right now, and of course, training camp. All the teams are reporting marvelous. Yeah, we are so close to kick yeah. off of the NFL season, my friend. It's gonna, yeah, Hall of Fame game is uh, next week. Oh <laughs> boy, put it right in our veins. We don't know your thoughts on all these yeah. different subjects. We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado. <laughs>